Good evening. How are we doing with sound? Can you hear me well? Just testing. Thank you very much, Oliver. Thank you very much, Eva Blimlinger, for this words on, of, words of uh, welcome. Thank you for offering a temporary home to Formal West and its third Formal West Research Congress. It has been extraordinarily exciting collaboration, and I can only hope that this excitement, this exciting collaboration, can actually be mirrored through really exciting conversations tonight and uh, the, in the next uh, couple of days. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to um, wish you a warm welcome on behalf of a huge number of organizers. And you already heard some name, and I'm going to, to add some to the list. I'd like to uh, welcome you on behalf of the team who put the Congress together, and namely Marion von Osten, who co-curated this, uh, this Congress, who's a research uh, advisor to our Form of Us project and a professor at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. And my co-curator, Katrin Romberg, who is an um, independent curator based in Vienna, and Christina Lee, who's been uh, leading research and organization, uh, research and organization of this Congress. Um, entire Buck team who, um, who prepared this, and an enormous number of people contributed to this, um, the realis realization of this Congress, from both uh, hosting organizations, uh, from both our partner organizations, such as Secession and uh, Academy of Fine Arts. And I would like to just really um, thank everybody warmly. Um, in your dossiers, you'll find a list of names, and I would like to encourage you to join um, me in reading those names uh, when you have um, a moment. I also would like to welcome you on behalf of our co-financing partners, the Mondrian Fund, Erste Foundation, and the Consulate General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Um, on behalf of all of us then, um, I'm really grateful for your presence here tomorrow, today, the day after tomorrow. And um, I would also like to welcome our um, digital guests. Just for your information, the Congress is streamed live and, um, at formovas.org, and our digital fellows uh, will be joining our conversations through Facebook and, um, and Twitter. You can find us at hashtag formovascongress. Um, in the short 10 minutes at my disposal, I'd like to actually offer a few brief remarks to attempt to unfasten our discussions. It was in the context of the long-term research, exhibition, education, and publication project, Formal West. The thoughts I would like to share with you will necessarily then be fragmentary and necessarily scattered. But I hope in the course of the coming two days, we will have enough opportunities to begin detangling some of these concerns and urgencies that we might actually collectively share. First, just what is Formal West? To answer on a practical level, it is a long-term research initiative that we began back in 2008 and plan to carry forth till 2014. Envisioned as a platform for thinking and acting of the continuously changing alliances with artists, curators, scholars, theorists, activists, and art and educational institutions, it is in fact an ongoing flow of various experimentations whether in the form of research exhibitions, expert meetings, educational curricula, publications, or like we gather here today, congresses. You must have noticed that it's third uh, such a congress, a research congress rather, I should say, following the 2009 gathering in Utrecht, which was organized in the days leading up to the uh, celebration of the 20th anniversary of, um, uh, of the end of the Cold War period, thus, in some ways looking back into our global histories. And the second Formal West Congress that took place in Istanbul at the end of 2010, co-curated by Simon Sheik, which was dedicated to the inquiry into the notion of a horizon, thus thinking of the global futures, as it were. All of them being the public moments within the project's trajectory, functioning more or less as a sort of synthetic research platforms, or anchors, if you will, in which various research themes are brought together, put under discussion, and public negotiation. The notion 
a form of us from which naturally the project borrows its title, brings us necessarily to the gigantic transformative moment that occurred around the events of 1989, which, and we all know this, brought about the end of Cold War and thus the assumed end of the three partitioning of the world into what we used to know as the first, second and third world. Despite the immense wave of political, economic, culture, and artistic reorientations that necessarily followed, the so-called West has desperately continued to cling to its claims of hegemony and continued thinking and acting as the first among the worlds. For the so-called West, rather than recognizing its own formerness, so to speak, many would rightly argue that over the course of the last two decades, we have been faced with quite the opposite. A resurgent West, as Paul Gilroy called it at the first Forum of West Congress, waging wars around the world with unprecedented vigor, or point to the West as a relentless engine for the expanding reach of neoliberal doctrines, as Gerald Browning reminded us a year ago at the Congress in Istanbul. It is exactly for these reasons that we invented the notion of Forum of West. In fact, as a proposition, as an imaginary, if you will, aimed at undoing the so-called West, and to mark the ending, as it were, of a historical cycle of overwhelming influence, power, and prestige of the Western geopolitical alliance in the world. A brief remark seems appropriate here. Let's keep in mind that former does not mean an end to a condition, nor does it exclusively mean past. The former condition seems meaningful because it still has some power over the imagination in the present and holds within it the space to engage critically with both the West's problematic and positive or potentially positive aspects. Think, for example, about the ideal of democracy, the influence of which on the global arena needs to be perhaps reconsidered, but not dismissed. Having said that, former West is a speculative term a problematizing device which we conceived as a tool to help us try to come to terms with the contemporary condition in a different and nuanced way, to allow us to move about things and our own field of theory and praxis differently than we would otherwise. For us, former West is to imagine the so-called West as but one of the provinces of the world and to let the old resurgent hegemonic, you name it, West, be what it is, an anachronism of the politics of the past. Former West is for us to imagine that the West, from within this provincial position, should, however, continue contributing to the world, yet outside the structure of domination. I think it's very important to remember that the meaning of former West is not given. It has to be negotiated. And as it continuously opens before us new exciting discussions, I'd like to see it as a possibility for modesty modesty as a strategy, if you will, and to continue examining the productive critical tensions that lie beneath it. If I mention that former West is a tool, then it is what should enable us to engage in cultural politics to come that would not debate and question the hegemony of the so-called West alone. Rather, it wants to contribute to the grammar of emancipatory logics of resistance of not only the so-called West, but of the world and in the world as at stake is the question of the new and qualitatively different convergences within the global condition, with literally all its parts undergoing a variety of structural, political, and cultural transformations. And clearly, art itself has been implicated in the reality of an increasing number of antagonisms, whether economic, political, or aesthetic, over the course of these last two decades. It seems to me that vis-a-vis -vis these shifting global relations and meanings that we have yet to fully understand, contemporary artistic production, too, must be taken to task. I believe it is possible to propose, though clearly not without some risks, that a particular brand of contemporary art in fact emerged in parallel to former West from within the fundamental historical changes of 1989. While the term contemporary art, just a brief remi reminder, has been used at various points, points throughout the previous century to signify art produced in those respective moments, here, contemporary art comes into being as an art historical period in its own right, 
and an ensemble of hegemonic practices that hold onto the Western structure of domination in aesthetic, cultural, political, and economic terms. It has been argued occasionally that contemporary art, with capital C and A as an art historical period, is now one of the dominant sources of iconographic representation of the ideological system of neoliberalism. It might be perhaps said, and I warned you that due to the lack of time, this picture is drawn with but broad strokes, but it must be perhaps said that contemporary art in the meantime began functioning as a set of standardizing, normalizing procedures and ensured their perpetual reproduction or the production of the same. We perhaps, who knows, could go as far as to claim that contemporary art can now be considered to be either a product or a tool for propaganda, and in most cases, a combination of both, product or propaganda, for the hegemonic formation of neoliberalism. In other words, it is not unthinkable that while contemporary art remains an item for consumption, art which functions as critical or is politically engaged has, through critique, in fact become a vehicle for the promotion of capitalism, just as through affirmation, socialist realism functioned as propaganda for communism. And I pose this in a form of question for discussion. Would it be possible in this context of project called Former West to harvest the meaning of formerness in the field of contemporary art? Can we use this most transformative energy and begin undoing contemporary art, as it were, and seek what do we find in the seams of the culture production in the global culture and aesthetic sphere that moves beyond these confines, that forges different connections and another sort of culture political confidence across transnational sites of production? How do we arrive at art that is not so much a shared language, but both individual and collective ethics? as well. On this note, with this question to, tonight, I'm particularly happy that we can begin untangling these questions by a keynote lecture by Nancy Adajania, culture theorist and curator based in Mumbai. I'm a great admirer of uh, Nancy's work, um, and I very much look forward to her lecture that she titled uh, for this occasion an untimely meditation pointing to future acumeny of art. Please join me in welcoming Nancy Adachania. Thank you.